Zach Mercer, very nice to see you. It's been a while. I was just trying to think, actually, before we started recording this, when it was that we last... Because we worked together a couple of times for Sky, I think it was. Would yes. that be about right? Back in the under-20s, wasn't it? Yeah, it was under-20s. It was a while ago. Yeah. I, I will never forget um, working with you because I think we worked with Cat Merchant, who because we did one of the England games as well, and we worked with a guy called um, Mike McCarthy, who was a Leinster... Yeah. Yeah. Connacht's great and you called him Mick throughout the entire um, <laughs> does that ring a bell well, or not I do remember that day but I didn't realize I was calling him the wrong name the whole time well Mick McCarthy is is sort of a Wolves managerial I mean he's, he's, he's a football managerial legend but as a Wolves fan I remember him um doing his thing I just remember that so clearly it, it, it was what was so lovely about it is that you were you know, just a young man in a hurry, and Mike McCarthy wasn't getting in the way. And I thought, well, <laughs> well no one there. helped me, mate. No one helped me there. Well, I, I think we kept trying to get in there, but you know, it's like one of those. Oh, Mick. One of those I didn't realize that. He works for the RPA, doesn't he now? Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah he works man. For the RPA. Very so if I ever meet him again, uh, I'll make sure I call him Mike. Call him Mike, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think Mick McCarthy probably that sees him trading up in the world. Anyway, how are you? How is life? I, I, I was just saying before we started recording, many congratulations. I'm, it's one of those moves. I'm I'm really pleased for you because it's mega, and I'm really sad because it sort of feels like the story is is diverting at a point where you know your, your fans etc would love it to to be going in a different direction. But how are you? How is life? Where are you at? Yeah, it's been no very good, obviously. It's been a pretty busy week this week. Um, bit of a roller coaster the week this week. Obviously, there's been a lot of rumours flying around uh, about my future at the club, and obviously, it all got released um, this week. So I'm very happy that it's out there now, and um, for everyone to know. And obviously, just just ready to crack on, really, mate. How long have you been sitting on a signed contract? How long have you had to sort of uh, keep, not, keep the zip tight? Not to be fair, not that long. It's all kind of been very last minute. It's just. I've obviously been open and honest with hoops uh, at Bath and um, obviously when I got offered by Montpellier, I went straight to him and when we agreed that I, I would leave and the contract was pretty much signed straight away, I wasn't letting that one stay. So are you, are you out of contract or, or is your contract coming to an end and that's why you signed? Uh, my contract's out in July, yeah. Okay. So uh, my contract was finished. So I'm in Bath until July and then I, that's when I'll join uh, Montpellier. Mega, mega cash money? I mean, are we looking at sort of you know, yachts <laughs> and, and private that. jets? Everyone says that, and then I've kind of got to say, no, it's not. There's other reasons why I'm going. Uh, of course you do, yeah. Yeah, but obviously... But the bank, yeah. the bank manager's happy. <laughs> yeah, let's just say I need to find a good uh, investment manager. Good on you. And quite right, too. There's no point doing it if it ain't lining the nest, etc. cetera. Um, how did it come about? Was it, you know, have you got an agent out there doing the work for you? Or did they come and say, Zach, we'd love to have a chat? How, how do these conversations materialise? Yes, it is an interesting one because I've never been out of contracts since I've been 17. So ever since I've joined Bath, I've always kind of signed early or a year early. So I've never even gone to the open market, really. Um, and obviously, my agency... Uh, we went to the market and Montpellier were, were interested. Um, obviously, they've got pick and there. Um, and they obviously, was, there's contracts there, but I never kind of thought it would uh, kick on. It was just kind of one of those things. Oh, yeah, Montpellier are keen. It's something like, yeah, and you could tell the grandkids later on, yeah, one, one, Montpellier interested me at one point. And it's like, yeah, very good. Sure, they were. Um, but, it, yeah, it kind of kicked on, really. And obviously, then there was conversations with Philippe Saint-André, who actually, interesting, gave me a man of the match once when I was playing for Bath against Wasps. And I remember meeting him after the tunnel to do an interview for some French TV, and I never actually knew who he was. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. He, One he of the actually, greats. He was known as the Flying Pig. Yeah, I know. So he actually gave me the man of the match medal, and obviously, he's now a director of rugby in, down in Montpellier. So I'm looking forward to meeting back up with him. Life moves pretty fast, doesn't it? And um, what do you know about Montpellier, the city? I mean, did they? Sort of, I can't imagine you've been out on the private jet to get there and have a look around. <laughs> have, they, have they done a bit of a Zoom tour and sent you a, a tourist brochure? Do you know on Google Maps you can go on that 3D flyover top? <laughs> right. That is your research, is it? <laughs> that is our research. No, basically, well, obviously, we haven't been able to go. Me and my girlfriend, so we've kind of signed a contract with not knowing what the place is like. But yeah. having spoken to a lot of people. Um, I know that uh, the south of France, near the Mediterranean, it's, it's not going to be too bad of a spot. And obviously, Cam Fortuli, that was at Bath, went to Montpellier for a season. So he's someone I've, I've spoken to about it. And he says, there's no better places uh, to play rugby, really. So I'm really excited to get down there. 
That is amazing. Take take the sun cream. It's, yeah, a, it's a beautiful I part of France. quite well, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there. I mean, looking outside now, it's chucking down rain, so yeah. and it's dark, so I can't wait to get, get out to the south of France. Um, I want to ask you about the England conversation. Did you talk to Eddie, or is that is that a communication line that's gone quiet and that's sort of helped with the the decision making process? Oh no, yeah, that's a communication line that's definitely gone quiet. Um, I haven't spoke to Eddie for a, for a while now. Um, because I have been injured, to be fair, I haven't been playing that much rugby as I'd like to, and I have been injured. But I didn't. It's one of those decisions that I've made that I didn't want to just sit and wait. I wanted to go and have a new challenge. Um, I've been at Bath six years now, so uh, I wanted uh, a new challenge, a new adventure, and obviously Montpellier is where I want to be for the next two seasons. Um, and with that in mind, do you feel the door shuts on England? Thanks a lot. It was fun while it was lasted, or is it? I'm going to go. I'm going to get you know, further my career, I'm going to take in, you know, different ways of doing things and, and hopefully that dream comes back another time. No, definitely that one, uh, ben, I want I want to go out there and um, embrace embrace the culture and develop as a player on and off the field and when my time's right to come back to England, then I will come back and, um, and try and crack on with that England uh, squad. I think people forget that I'm 23 years of age, um, so I, if I decide to come back, I'll be 25, so I've still got plenty of time ahead of me yet. Um, but um, people normally go to France towards the end of the career. I want to go at the start and uh, experience some, some lavish lifestyles out there and different people and understand different how different people go about the game. And I'm very excited for that. You should talk to Hass because I think he's got probably quite a good little black book he can he can yeah, lend you. No, certainly when you're up I'd in Paris. Drop him a message. <laughs> yeah, do. Hey, he can um, teach you a few things. I'm sure. Well, yeah, just careful what he teaches you because I'm not sure it all necessarily... Um, <laughs> we'll take you where you need to go. Um, we always read in these, um, you know, the press releases and, and the things that come out. It's a, it's a sort of a mutually beneficial decision and everyone goes with good wishes, etc. H- how has the conversation been with Stuart Hooper at Bath? Because it's obviously, it's quite a tricky time there at the moment. I mean, has it been a genuine, I get it, go and make the most of it? Or, you know, do these things sometimes come out in print in a slightly glossier fashion than in conversation? No, it genuinely has been that conversation. He... When I when I got the interest from uh, Montpellier, I went straight to him and said, "Here is it, is hoops." I've had a lot of interest from Montpellier, um, and he's like, "Okay, thanks for being honest and open with me." And when it came to the time later on down the line that it was closer to the time where I needed to sign this contract, then I sat down and said to him, "I think I, I want to go. I want to I want to go and experience this this new culture and new challenge." And Obviously, he's not happy about. We're not. He's obviously upset because I'm leaving, but he understands my reasoning behind it. And there's definitely no bad blood left there. Um, and you got who knows what could happen. And Hoops is someone that I definitely keep in touch with, and he's a good guy. And uh, obviously, I'm committed there till July, and um, I'm ready to crack on with with the boys until then. I love it. Um, Rob, who's the ledger, pulls these notes together, says that Guy Mercer. With your dad, unless there's something very weird going on down at Bath, I think we'll, go with Gar- we'll go with Gary in the meantime. Unless, yeah, unless there's something dad, we yeah. don't know. Yeah, Gary's my dad. Yeah, absolutely. Right. How is Guy Mercer these days? Um, as far as I'm concerned, he's, he's still around Bath. He's got young family yeah. now, and I think he's um, he's working in the building industry. I'm pretty sure, and I haven't seen him for a while. But a few of the lads obviously keep a close contact with uh, with Merce. Yeah, um, very top the, bloke. The, 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 the reason I bring up your dad is that I'm just looking at played rugby league for Bradford, Warrington, Leeds, Halifax, Castleford. Um, I just wonder how he feels about his, his boy going off to play in Montpellier in the yeah, no, he, he didn't have the he didn't go to the, the Catalan Dragons or anything. He was uh, he was around the Yorkshire uh, yeah. region. But um, no, my dad is, is he pleased for you or is he like what are you doing? You know, no, that's he's not very, the real men go. No, he's very pleased for me. Um, he was one of the the main people I spoke to when I when this contract offer came, and he's he's very well. He left New Zealand at seventeen to come to to the to the UK to play rugby league. So he understands that you want a new challenge, and he knows what I'm like. He knows I'm ambitious, and I don't want to be sit there and be comfortable somewhere. I want a new challenge, and um, he was the first person to say, "Oh, you got to go for it, son. Um, you can't sit and wait." Um, and he's like, "Rugby's a short career, so you got to do what's best for you in the meantime." And get out to the south of France and I think it also means that he can have some nice away trips uh, to the <laughs> south of France which I'm sure he'll love I reckon the wine's better in Montpellier than it is necessarily yeah he does like his rouge so I'm sure yeah, we'll be alright he'll be falling asleep on the beach somewhere quite right rack up the carafe <laughs> yeah. uh, and the girlfriend is she is she excited and 
what does what does your girlfriend do? Is she is she working? Um, she works is for she... a family business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does she take she's that out almost... to France with her? Is that or is she going to come and? Um, while she's well, there? we've had this conversation. Um, no, we're all very excited to go. Um, she's very excited, but it's quite tough because we say to each other, it's like, how can we get excited for somewhere where we haven't been yet? So yeah. I think when we uh, actually get the opportunity to go to Montpellier and she sees and I see how beautiful the place is, then I think we're going to move that want to go there, there and there. And, um, but to start off with, I think we're just going to go out there, enjoy the lifestyle and try and learn the language a little bit before she tries to get a job out there or whatever she decides to do. But um, I'll probably need her at home supporting me after trying to speak to some French people all day because I'll be a bit confused with what's going on. <laughs> I was going to say, did you do GCSE French? And if you did, what did you get? I did do intermediate two, which is a Scottish system, and I actually got an A. Right, um, yeah, natural. I can, still, I can still like speak it. I can still remember the passage that I had to write. I can still remember it word by word. Yeah. But I think I say I'm like still 15 in it. Right. How, how, order, order me two croissants and a, and a flat white from the boulangerie. Just go do pan au chocolat, <laughs> and then I can go a, a chocolate asho, which is a hot chocolate. Yeah, I could do hot you'll, chocolate. You'll, you'll <laughs> get you'll get what you're given, son. Yes, um, cafe au lait. Cafe yeah. au lait, très bien. Um, I said, I mean, you know, it sounds like a very exciting adventure. I mean, just just from your perspective, you, you mentioned you've done six years at Bath. I can't believe it's been that long, actually. But you know, why now? Why is this the right time to to to, to I suppose shuffle the pack and, and play a different hand? Yeah, it's it's tough. Like I said in an interview with Bath, I said, I don't think there'll ever be a right time to leave. Um, I think I can sit at Bath for a while and be comfortable there. But it kind of hit me, like, obviously the COVID stuff going on and speaking to different people. Like, rugby is a very short career, and I have noticed that this year with regard to, like, thinking, going, geez, I've been here six years now. I joined at 17, and then another six years, and I was 29. And then you're like, what, what am I sitting and waiting for? I've got, I've got to go out and grab it by, by the the horns really and find an opportunity to kind of get my name back out there and I feel like Montpellier is that opportunity. Some some proper talent there as well. I mean Reinac, Pollard, Gim Garrido, Willemse, Lozov I didn't yeah of course Alex Lozovsky's down there at the moment. Yeah. He, he's going is he going to get back to Saturday? Is he on yeah, loan, I think he's he? supposed to come back. Yeah, he's on loan, yeah. So I've been speaking I mean, to Lozov a little bit. Have you have you spoken to oh as you spoken to him? Have you spoken to any of the others? Did they put you onto a you know, sometimes they sort of spread the message through those who are, who are currently there. Have you spoken to any of the other the other players down no, there? No, so obviously Ibitoy uh, left from yeah. Argentina to go to Montpellier. So I did have a, a little brief chat with him. I was kind of just asking about meetings, really, and whether they're in French or English or whatever. So there's a translator there. So that's definitely um, made me relax a lot more. Um, and yeah. Lazowski, I've been messaging just really about places around Montpellier, like to live. So obviously me and, me and my girlfriend, we... We're obviously going to have to try and find a place without actually going out there. So it's going to be yeah. an interesting one. Amazing. And what did, how did Philippe sell it to you? I mean, what, why did he say, I want you? What has he shown you and told you about the vision? What's what's the kind of the grand plan? Oh, obviously, like everyone, now I know what, who Philippe is. Um, obviously, he's, he's a pretty um, prestigious man in rugby. And obviously, Montpellier are that a prestigious team. And obviously, they're probably underperforming this year and they'll admit that. But... He didn't have to sell it to me. Um, as soon as I heard the name Montpellier, I was like, straight away, I, I kind of lifted up and raised my eyebrows and was was definitely listening then. And obviously, I think it's just quite nice from a coach, from Philippe, to ring me and say, we want you. We think you're going to offer something different that the top 14 is not seen. And if I have a coach ringing me telling me that, then uh, I'm pretty committed there um, that I, I, I want to be there. Which is brilliant. And actually, I'm quoting you. You'll know you've said this, but I feel like I'm able to offer the top 14 something different. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I spent a huge part of my career with Bath and the blue, black and white. I'm forever grateful for the opportunities um, that this has brought me. What is, what is it? How, you know, you talk about pick and who's obviously sort of a legend of the top 14 and, and French rugby. What is it that you want to do that you think, you know, offers that point of difference? Oh, obviously, pick and is a world-class player. I'm not saying that <clears throat> I'm better than him or anything like that. It's... Um, I look at probably like a Gregory Aldrich and um, that kind of style of player that obviously the slimmer style that, that's a bit more agile and a bit more robust on that kind of aspect of it. And I believe that playing against the French teams in Europe for Bath, I, I feel like I when I played against them, they struggled on that aspect with, with regard to my footwork and stuff. So uh, I'm going out there and uh, hopefully give them a completely different picture. But I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to be 
very tough, uh, very physical, and I feel that's that's what I need in uh, my stage of, of my career. Careful of the camembert. They bring it out half time in training, I think. Well, uh, yeah, you know, I've, heard that. Foot. I've actually said to my girlfriend, I was like, I cannot get big. So right. I don't know what we're going to do, but the boulangerie is probably going to have to be maybe once a week <laughs> um, and no bread or something like that. Yeah. It could be, it could go either way, but it's definitely something that I, I, I've got to keep on top of. You've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to get banned from the various hotspots around town. The other thing I was going to say, you, you know, you, you said you wanted to go out there and catch the eye. I mean, you know, we obviously do this on a weekly basis with a man who wore a pretty bright red scrum cap. Will you go Union Jack? Are you going to go Trickle or how, how are you going to catch the eye other than the fleet of foot and the, um, you know, doing what you do? I think, yeah, I don't know whether, obviously I've always wore a blue scrum cap and I probably need to sit down and have a think about whether that's time for a change, but I think I have to be a bright strong cat because when my parents watch me or when my girlfriend watches me, they know where I am. They can see me on the pitch. So uh, that's definitely something that I probably have to... And my grandparents as well. Obviously, they're getting a little bit older now, so they'll need something to, to see, be able to see where I am. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to just catch them with, with my play, my style of play. And um, I don't know. I have to speak to Hask and see what scrum cap he recommends maybe out there or maybe get a special one made like a Jack Noel Red Bull one or even just like maybe a boulangerie could sponsor me while I'm out there or something like that. <laughs> on the top or I'll have to work we'll, it out. We'll get Hask's agent on the case or, or your agent, you know, <laughs> some extra work for them to do. Yeah. Um, it sounds really exciting. And I, I, as, you know, I said, it's, I'm, I'm really pleased for you that, that, you know, that you're, you're playing the hand you got. I think it's a really, a really exciting thing. Between now and then, obviously, you know, Bath is, it's, it, it feels and it looks from the outside like a tough time down there at the moment. But is it happy and harmonious on the inside? Does it feel like the click is not that far away? No, definitely. Obviously, looking from the outside in, I can understand why people think that. And obviously, Friday night was was very disappointing. And we're not making excuses. But when you lose two second rows in the same collision, and you're down to your fourth choice lineup call against a team like Bristol, then... You know, it's going to be a tough ask and a tough day, but um, obviously we've underperformed this year and we'll openly admit that. And we're trying to get back to the form we were post the first lockdown and where we're getting to final, semi-final footy and um, we will get there. And we are a happy camp. There's definitely there's no one that's, it's not a place where you don't want to go and work. You want to go and work and you want to do what's best for the boys and what better opportunity than we do to go against Quinns on Saturday. And obviously they've got all their shackles off. So it's going to be a... a a very good game. Looking forward to it. Good on you. Listen, it's very nice to have a catch up. And, and as I say, I'm, I'm very excited. We'll certainly be watching with real interest how it goes. Um, have you got, have you, as Hoop said, look, you know, doors always open. As he said, you know, we want first dibs. Or is that all <laughs> contract? And is that all um, confidential? I think that's all confidential, but um, who knows what could happen in the future. And for me, it's obviously about the two years in the, in the top 14 and, who knows, I might love it out there. So we'll, we'll have to see. And uh, I'm very excited for my future. Good. That's a, that's a really robust forward Was defense. that good? There's nothing getting was, through I, there. I got, a bit, just, I got a bit flustered there. Re regardless really of where much. I pitch it, you're just blocking these these absolute howitzers coming in. Um, oh. Well done. Listen, good on it. It's really, really nice to chat. We, we, we'd love to keep in touch, actually, while you're out there. And find out no, how you're definitely, on mate. Send us no, send I'll some give you all the inside stuff. loops. Yeah, give you the inside loop of the top. 14. Maybe, maybe, we'll maybe I'll do it in French tour. next time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, well, we, yeah, that's possibly pushing it. But maybe we'll come for a little tour, have a check in, and you can you can show us where you're right, not easy. I'll show you around. I'll show you around the boulangeries. We'll do the damage for you. Zach, good luck. Go forth <laughs> and conquer. Mate. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks for checking in. Cheers, mate. All the See best. Ta-da. Bye-bye.